everybody. Sorry for the delay. Um, I would like to start uh, by giving you some background information uh, on uh, this trial, uh, which is kind of unique. Um, and I want to emphasize three points. First is the role of MRD assessment in ALL. The second is how to treat MRD positive patients in the best way. And the third is blinatumumab, which is a really new treatment principle for the management of ALL. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> okay, now I, I got it. <laughs> so um, ALL is basically a disease of the bone marrow, and uh, traditionally the disease is measured by simply counting the blasts uh, on a bone marrow smear under the microscope, and the sensitivity of this method is 5%. Uh, if the, uh, the blast count is below 5%, we speak of a complete hematologic remission, but uh, we know that still uh, blast cells are present in the, bo in the body, and this is called minimal residual disease. And several methods are available to in ALL to measure minimal residual disease. Uh, in our study, we focused on a PCR-based method, a quantitative PCR of individual gene rearrangements. Um, the reason why we choose this method is that it is available or applicable in more than 90% percent of the ELL patients, and it is a very well standardized method for evaluation of MRD. Now, the second thing which is important here is uh, what is the biological meaning of MRD persistence? We know from a number of clinical trials that persistent MRD um, uh, leads to a very poor prognosis in ALL patients. You can see on the bottom uh, of this slide, on the right side, uh, uh, data from the German ALL trial showing that patients uh, with persistent MRD, which is here named molecular failure, nearly all relapse uh, despite continued chemotherapy. So uh, this is a group of patients which is uh, basically resistant to conventional chemotherapy drugs. And on the left side, you can see that uh, this uh, high relapse rate also translates into a poor overall survival, and nowadays this is the poorest subgroup of adult ALL, which is identified by molecular failure. Now, how we can we optimally treat these patients? Uh, in ALL, we usually offer patients a stem cell transplantation if they have a poor prognosis because this is the most intensive treatment which is available nowadays. And uh, most of the study groups have this indication now uh, for patients with molecular failure of ALL. But unfortunately, these patients also have a higher relapse rate after the subsequent stem cell transplantation. So uh, this is a good uh, treatment, but still not optimal. And we need urgently new treatment approaches to treat these chemotherapy-resistant uh, patients. And um, these uh, new treatment approaches should be non-chemotherapy. And the goal is here to achieve a molecular remission, uh, to avoid the full relapse, and also um, to perform then a stem cell transplantation in complete molecular remission. And we should not forget about the patients who cannot get a transplant, for, for example, older patients. And in these patients, of course, it's a goal um, to achieve a continuous complete remission with these uh, new compounds. And here comes blinatumumab into uh, the place. It is a new treatment principle, a B-specific antibody, which is on one side directed to CD19. CD19 is expressed on the surface of B precursor ALL blast cells, and on, uh, on the other side it is directed to CD3 and thereby attracts uh, CD3 positive T cells, brings them in very close proximity to the target cells, and this leads to activation of the T cells, the T cells proliferate, and they perform a, a serial kill of the target cells, which is very effective. And uh, there are some data from a small pilot study from Germany where we uh, treated 20 patients with MRD-positive ALL, and the response rate in this trial was 80%. And there are, of course, uh, much more data with Spinatumab in relapsed refractory ALL. Uh, this also led to the FDA approval just a few days ago. But the difference in this trial is that we treat the patients before the full relapse. Um, so we included patients with MRD-positive <coughs> ALL above the age of 18, the detection le limit had to be above 10 to the minus 3, so quite high MRD level, close to the full relapse. Um, the primary endpoint of this study was complete MRD response, and of course, a secondary endpoints adverse events. 
there are, all, are also a number of long-term uh, outcome parameters as secondary uh, endpoints, but they cannot be analyzed at this time point. Uh, a longer follow-up is needed. 116 patients were included in this trial, uh, an international trial uh, in several European countries. This is the treatment overview. Uh, all patients had to receive at least one cycle. Uh, one cycle means uh, 28 days of continuous infusion of blenatumumab. Then the primary endpoint assessment. After this first cycle, uh, patients uh, could receive um, three more cycles uh, or a stem cell transplantation at any of a time point if a donor was available. Afterwards, the patient entered the long-term efficacy and survival follow-up. So this slide shows you the major result of this trial. And um, I would like to explain, uh, first of all, the um, endpoints, because we have to get a little bit used to the new uh, MRD-based uh, remission assessment in ALL. So uh, the primary endpoint was complete MRD response after cycle one. This means no MRD detectable with a minimum sensitivity of 10 to the minus four. There was an exploratory endpoint, uh, which is MRD response. The difference is that also patients were calculated here who were still MRD positive, but below 10 to the minus four. And there are two patient populations which we analyzed. The first is the total population of all patients. Um, and here, the complete MRD response rate was 78%, and the MRD response, 85%. And uh, the second uh, pa patient group where we analyzed these uh, results were, is the efficacy analysis set. This is, of course, a more relevant uh, group of patients because these are the patients who really fulfilled the entry criteria, but had an MRD level above 10 to the minus three, and also no full relapse. And here, the results are slightly different, 80% um, complete MRD response and 85% uh, MRD response. Interestingly, we found, didn't find any prognostic factor for the achievement of uh, MRD response, so the responses were achieved in patients at any age, uh, in patients with prior relapse, and also in patients with uh, different um, MRD levels at the start uh, of the treatment. Um, the adverse events profile uh, with uh, showing here the, frequent, the events with a frequency of more than 10% has two types of uh, adverse events. The first type are events which are somehow correlated to the cytokine release, like fever, chills, and fatigue. Um, this was observed in most of the patients, but uh, m uh, in most cases, uh, the adverse events were only grade one and two. And the other type of adverse events are neurologic events. Um, most frequent symptoms were tremor and aphasia in 29% um, and 13% of the patients. And also here, um, the, most of the events were grade one or two. But still, these events are clinically relevant because uh, they can lead to treatment interruptions in some of the patients. This is, of course, something which we do not like to do in these patients. To conclude, um, this is the first international multicenter trial in adult ALL with a MRD-based patient inclusion and MRD endpoint established by central MRD assessment in a central lab. Most patients achieved a complete MRD response within one cycle, so a very rapid response. Responses occurred in all subgroups of the patients. Adverse events were mostly related to the T cell activation, um, but there were also clinically relevant neurologic events. Um, most of them had, of, uh, although grade one or two. The follow-up data of this trial will show whether the good MRD response rate will translate in, an, in a long-term outcome benefit. For me personally, uh, this trial is, uh, is very important um, because it's an up-to-date trial where we use new methods for uh, PCR-based methods to identify patients <laughs> with a high risk of relapse and treat them before the relapse occurs. And the second point is that we use a new endpoint, which is, of course, also MRD-based. And the third is that we use a new uh, non-chemotherapy treatment to eradicate this uh, highly resistant, uh, persistent uh, ALL subclone. Thank you.